Well, hi, food friends. Welcome to Cavalcade of Food. It's Kevin. Hey, Kevin. I'm Ralph over here behind the camera. And we are moving and grooving today. And um, It's a hot one, though. It is hot. Oh, man, it's hot. And it's... Uh, so let's turn that oven on. <laughs> make it even hotter. Well, here's the thing. Uh, we've got some leftovers that we want to use. And we're always looking at creative ways to use leftovers. And in this case, today's leftover is chicken. Oh, okay. Okay? Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to make a uh, casserole. Yeah, that music's so loud. We're <laughs> we've got our wonderful assistant, Mary yeah. Ann. We've got so, the stereo outside. And it's uh, Harry James, not uh, Jesse. We like Harry James. But yeah, but Trumper can be a little competitive with the voice. Okay. So. Um, you were saying. We are making a casserole, though. And casseroles are great. They're great when you have a crowd coming over. They're great uh, for potlucks, church dinners, all that kind of stuff, and a great way to incorporate leftovers. And this is like the quintessential American casserole. Quintessential comfort food, which uh, is such a you know popular word these days, right. but it's something that I know Kevin's been doing as long as I've known him in all of his life. Well, and Ralph wanted, to, uh, wanted us to open up an all-casserole restaurant. Remember that crazy idea you had? Yeah, and call it Mama Casseroles. <laughs> yeah, Mama Casseroles. So, the, the, this is going to be a chicken noodle casserole. So we got our chicken, um, and if you don't have leftover chicken you want to make this, a great tip is get one of those rotisserie chickens at your local market. Your store. They're great because, I mean, gosh, they're inexpensive and they're cooked, they're ready they're to go. They're usually pretty tender and yeah, moist and seasoned. Juicy. So we're going to make noodles. Now, here's what I'm using. I'm using an egg noodle. This is a 16 ounce bag, so this is a big bag. And I'm going to cook the whole thing. What we're going to do though when we, when we boil these noodles is we're going to cook it a little short on the time. So for example, they say six to eight minutes. So I'm going to actually cook these probably no more than six because you don't want them too soft because they're going to cook some more because... In the, in the oven. In the oven, exactly, when we bake the casserole. So we're going to get our noodles cooked and when they're done, we'll come on back and we'll add some of our other ingredients, which are frozen vegetables. Now, these I put in the microwave and kind of cook them. Um, and always better to either thaw them out or cook them, not put them in frozen, okay? Um, so we've got some broccoli and cauliflower florets here. We're going to put that in. We're going to add a little color with some nice diced tomato. Pimento. Pimentos, yum. That's such an old-fashioned thing. My mom used to put pimentos in all kinds of well, things. Yeah, it always reminds me of her whenever you know, I use them. Pimento loaf. You ask somebody nowadays, a young person, they yeah, probably wouldn't even know what, know what you're is. talking about. This is a cup of Parmesan cheese. Okay. Looks more like a bowl, which is all right with me. <laughs> and then uh, this is uh, minced dehydrated onion, onion flakes. I've got... Uh, crushed back pe black pepper here and poultry seasoning which is a great blend of sort of sage and thyme and a little rosemary just a little bit to have it in the background then we're going to use about two cups of the uh, chicken and of course it's white and dark meat both you could use one or the other whatever your preference is I see a couple and of cans of soup we do now we're not afraid to cook with soup here so we're using cream of mushroom soup you could use cream of celery soup. You could use cream of chicken soup if you wanted to. We're using cream of mushroom. If you cannot deal with using canned soup, you could make this recipe if you wanted to make about maybe four cups of a... Um, cream stock soup? Yeah, like a bechamel sauce. Oh, just a okay, sauce. Okay, it would work the same way. Um, we're going to add milk to the cream soup. Um, and that's going to be our gravy, and then we're going to put it all in a greased 9 by 13 dish, and we're going to bake it off, and we're going to have it for dinner tonight. So once everything's in there, the, uh, that's the work, and then the easy part is just putting it in the oven and coming back and getting it out. Exactly. So we're going to finish boiling our, our nice egg noodles here, and we'll oh. come on back. Okay. okay. We've nice. just drained our noodles, and we're going to put them back in our... Can here that we cooked them in. 
So you don't need to rinse them, or some people, you know, have different things they do with. Uh, yeah, noodles I mean, you to can rinse them. Sticking. You can rinse them, but I'm not going to. Yeah. How's that? That's fine. <laughs> so, let's take our soup first, okay? So we're going to put two cans of this cream of mushroom. Andy Warhol's favorite, Campbell's. Yes. But we don't endorse any brand here. We just use what we have on hand or, or what our parents used or, or what we have what a coupon for. What our grandmas and aunts used. Now, this has um, this is a lower salt version. It has a little less sodium. I don't like the fat-free soups. I don't think they have the right oomph. That's me. Some of you may be used to fat-free soups, and you could certainly do that. And again, for those of you who gasp in horror, when people use canned soups in a recipe, you can make your own cream sauce, which is essentially what we're replacing with the soup. And you said that's uh, mostly like a bechamel? Yeah, it's like a bechamel, although, of course, this also imparts the flavor from, you know, the mushroom. All right. So, in addition to the mushroom soup, we're putting in about two and a quarter cups of milk. Okay? You so, with me so far? Yeah, whole milk. So you want to keep it creamy, so you want to... want to keep it nice and creamy. So use whole milk. Okay, and we want to also keep, you know, keep it liquidy. It will thicken up as it bakes, but here we go. Okay, so that will also sort of dilute the soup. Remember, that soup is condensed, so... All right, we've got that mixed in. Now let's put in our spices, our onion, pepper, poultry seasoning. By the way, if you have fresh herbs, you could use those, um, obviously. We do have fresh herbs, but... We're keeping this user-friendly and simple tonight. Yeah, and you know what? I did pick some, and maybe uh, we'll use it as a top garnish because we do have sage and thyme and some rosemary. This is our Parmesan cheese, and it goes. And let's also put in our, this is a, was a, I believe a 10 ounce bag of the vegetables, okay? So frozen, um, or 12 ounce, I'm sorry, my bad, 12 ounce bag of the vegetables. Broccoli and cauliflower, you said? Broccoli and cauliflower. You know, if that's not your, broccoli and cauliflower ain't your thing, go ahead and use, uh, like peas. you could use peas, you could use a mixed vegetable. I'm going to put in about maybe two tablespoons of pimento here. We heard somebody today on the radio talking about an eggplant casserole. I think we should try that next. Ooh, I really yeah, like I know. Yes, I know. Eggplant's a favorite of yours. We could put, I mean, because I think it's a creative vegetable that you can do a lot with. So I don't think we've done much with it on cavalcade of food yet. So something to keep in mind. Now our chicken. Yeah, let's just use it all. Okay. Like I said, it's probably a little bit more than two cups. This will be extra chickeny but all the better okay so this is probably more like three cups of chicken but you need you should use at least two all right you know what it's more pimentos get a little more color yeah let's you know you could like these jars are, are so small pimentos are basically uh, just like a red pepper red right? pepper that's all yeah. so you could cut up some red pepper or, for color and now, and you could put in, a, if you wanted to spice this up heat-wise. A little cayenne or... Yeah, or red pepper flakes, or instead of the pimento, you know, you could use like a hot, a hot red pepper. All right. It's looking good. Now, I've got a 9x13 here that is sprayed. This music is funky, Ralph. Yeah, it's the Motown strings. Here. Look at that. All right. Isn't that nice? Yeah, that looks that looks it's like it's gonna stay nice and moist. And of course, to ensure, we're going to top it with some uh, aluminum foil, okay? And put it in a 325 degree oven. If you wanted to go cheesier, you could top it probably at this point with some cheese. You could top it with cheese, or you could kind of let it bake through and then top it with cheese afterwards. Oh, okay. Um, so that the cheese sort of doesn't get lost, as it were. So how long does this um, bake? At 40 minutes, 40, 45 minutes. You know, essentially everything in it is really about cooked. 
So you're just kind of warming it through, but you want that sauce to develop. You want that Parmesan cheese to melt and blend in. And do its alchemy. Exactly. Do so, some chemistry. Here we go. And okay, we we're gonna we're getting ready to take it out of the oven, but you know what? I've got some wonderful fresh herbs here from the garden. You decided to add those at the last minute? Yeah. Just as a garnish, you said, right? As a garnish. We'll put them on top. So I picked some, I got some sage here, some rosemary, some little bit of thyme, and we're just taking the kind of the leaves off because you, you don't really, the, uh, the stems can, you know, be tough. And again, we're just going to use these for uh, a garnish. So I'm just going to give these kind of a rough chop. And you can, it just, there's something about the sage and the thyme and the rosemary. It's got a wonderful sort of... And that's what's in the poultry seasoning? Poultry seasoning. Yeah, there's other stuff in it too. But to me, it just goes great with like chicken and turkey and makes it kind of smell like a little bit like Thanksgiving. It's very aromatic. You can smell the... Uh when you break those up, the, the, the aroma is just filling the kitchen up. So there's our fresh herbs, okay? Now, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and get out our casserole. Oh! We're gonna need an extra grip here. Yeah, you don't want to play with Julia Child and have that land on the floor. <laughs> oh, we need it anyways, trust me. So, let's see. Oh yeah, look at that. Creamy, hot, beautiful. Delish. Look so, we've got a, we're gonna take our fresh herbs, we're just gonna do like this. You know, you could put more cheese on the top if you wanted to, and melt that in. That's a great thing with this kind of stuff. Extra cheese. Yeah, but this kind of gives it a little extra green. Wow, look at that. Sure is pretty, huh? So there it is, chicken noodle casserole. And uh, we are hungry and ready to dig in. So listen, thanks for being a part of this one. We had a great time. Hope you did too. I did. And we will see you next time. There's always room for you at our table at Cavalcade of Food. See you later. Bye. Adios.